on this episode of the Infinite Art Hunt. All of this studying, and you made a sad duck? It's a sad duck because it's not a masterpiece duck. It's a sad duck because it's just a regular duck. So once I go through a whole bunch of different sketches, I will then take it to the team and we'll have a big group discussion about it. Okay. So we'll all come together, say what we like and don't like about different sketches, and maybe fi figure out a middle ground where all of us agree on the best choice. So as we go through and grab some of these other joints, we can really kind of push Guzzi you know, forward here, and you can see that this is one of those FK joints because the rest of the bones here are Lead support for this program has been provided by the William Penn Foundation with additional support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Sidewater Family Foundation, the Thomas Locke Charitable Fund, and viewers like you. Hey there, everybody. I'm Freddie. That's Skookal. And welcome to the Infinite Art Hunt, where I travel around the city to learn everything I can about art, just for you. This week's art venture no, 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 is- No, no, that's not right. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, this week's art venture- This is not working out how I planned it. Uh, Ty, you're better than this. Okay, what if I try this? This week's- ah! <laughs> It's the Infinite Art Hunt! Another adventure with Fred, looking for art and making friends. Checking in with Grandma Tilly, the adventure never ends. We're gonna go to real places, find magic and wonder, and try new things and see what we can discover. There's art everywhere, and I really wanna explore. It's in the food that we eat, in the trees, in the forest. It's the infinite art. Oh, this is What are you doing? Can't you see I'm trying to record my intro? What am I doing? Can't you see what I'm doing? I'm actually doing what Grandma Tilly asked us to do. I'm making our collaborative painting. Well, last I checked, it didn't take screaming just to make a simple painting. A simple painting? No, no, no. Freddie, I've spent the last two weeks straight pouring through every textbook I have studying the work of the old masters. I've studied the composition of Leonardo, the draftsmanship of Raphael, the form of Michelangelo, the lighting of Peter Paul Rubens, and the rich hues of Kadir Nelson, all for this day. All for this day being to scream and interrupt my vlog? All for this day being that I can finally create my masterpiece but all I have to show for it is this. All this studying, and you made a sad duck? It's a sad duck because it's not a masterpiece duck. It's a sad duck because it's just a regular duck. Well, I can help if that means I can get back to my video and you can stop groaning. Oh, no, no. Look, I know what Grandma Tilly told us, but I have to do this alone. I have a vision, Freddie, and it's just, your mediocre brushwork just is not gonna cut it. What? Look, if I let you touch this painting, it'll ruin its authenticity. Authenticity, it means it's- I know what authenticity means, but I guess that my vocabulary skills are just too mediocre for your artistic vision, too. I'm glad that there's something that we both can agree on. Ty, it's just a painting. That's your problem. You take things way too seriously. I just want to help. And you don't take anything seriously, and you just can't seem to grasp when your help is not wanted. That's your problem. You know what? What? I cannot be around you right now. I'm going downstairs to get a hot dog and some chips, but don't expect any snacks when you get back. Fine. Fine. Fine!
I'm letting two of my friends, Brian and Bren from the PHL Collective, use the studio for work today, since their place is being fumigated for toon rat stank. And let me tell you, child, this is some strong stuff. Woo! They're not only artists like you, they're also masters at collaboration learning from and lending to each other to complete their goals. If you haven't heard from your grandma Tilly already, we make video games. Now I know that's probably not the first thing you think about when you think about art, but it's really a creative job. See you soon. Have fun learning about video games today, baby. Oh, and thank you for making space for them. Bye, babies. <laughs> <sighs> You can't be serious. I've spent two whole weeks working on this masterpiece and all was calm. But the day of, Freddy wanted to be annoying and now people are coming to the studio. Maybe it'll be fine. They're not coming right now. <gasps> Hello, Ty. This is Bren and Brian. They're the ones that make the video games that you and Freddy love so much. <gasps> Brian, Bren, this is Ty. He's Grandma Tilly's grandson, an aspiring artist, and, well, the studio art assistant. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Hey, how's it going? Well, wait a minute, Ty. <gasps> what is this crestfallen mallard? This duck is a mistake. I've worked all day trying to make it the way I wanted it to, but it just isn't working out. And it's just a painting. It's not like I can make my own video game like you guys do. Not on my own. Well, actually, we don't make video games on our own. It takes a lot of work from a lot of different people to actually make a video game. If you want, the two of us aren't doing anything today, and we'd be happy to show you how it's done. Sure, I guess. Oh, yes, please. Because then I can be super cool, and I can be able to speak to Freddy about how hip I am about the game. <gasps> Speaking of, where is Freddy? I thought she was supposed to be here. She's on a hot dog break. You know how that goes. Mm. Well, I hope when she gets back, she brings those little gummy candies that are shaped like hamburgers. Oh, I love them. Okay, well. The studio is yours, boys. Now please, show Ty a little thing about some video games. Thank you. Um, guys, before we start, can we do this thing that my cousin Freddy likes to do when we invite new guests? It's called Too Many Questions with Freddy. It's kind of this thing where she asks too many questions. Uh, but since she's not here right now, do you mind if I ask you too many questions? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Sounds like a lot of fun. All right. Get ready for too many questions with Ty. Who are you guys and what do you do for a living? My name is Bren and I'm the art director at PHL Collective. My name is Brian Gitlin and I am the lead designer at PHL Collective. What types of games are your favorite to play? Oof, that's tough. Uh, for me, I would say typically I like to play multiplayer games, ones that I can play like with friends uh, and being able to be like a little bit competitive with them. Water parks or dog parks? I'm a dog park guy. Yeah, same. As yeah. a dog lover, I gotta go to the dog yeah. park. Awesome. Where do video games come from? So a lot of times, you know, they come from computers. So it's a, it's a really good uh, collaboration between art, uh, tech, 
uh, and narrative development. And what really needs to happen is for individuals have to sit down and kind of come up with an idea. And once that idea is kind of created, you have to then break it up by the dis disciplines and create music, create the artwork for it, come up with the story, and then have the design and the programming all come together under one like, you know, software package to actually be developed. How do you say this word? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Worcester? Worcestershire. How did you come up with the idea for Goozy? Uh, so we wanted to make something that was like kind of creepy and but still something that younger demographics could find appealing and not be too scared from. So we wanted something that was not only captivating that younger audience, but kind of filled our idea for making something like a little bit more spooky. We're all kind of fans of like the Halloween kind of setting. So we yeah. wanted something to, that really like played into that. Very cool. And now, Goozy. Yeah. Goozy. <laughs> Brian, what's your favorite thing about Brent? Ooh, I don't know, Bren's a funny guy. He always keeps the uh, atmosphere light and positive and he's easy to work with. Bren, what's your favorite thing about Brian? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I would say probably Brian's determination. He's always really, he's a really good problem solver and gets determined to figure out solutions to things. So I think he's a good person to kind of have in your corner when you know the going gets tough and something needs to get done. Thanks, Bren. Well said. Welcome, Brian. <laughs> Footy pajamas or nightgown? Oh, we're team footy pajamas. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, it's a great kind of. Working solo or as part of a team? Always a team. Always a team. Yeah. Teamwork. Always a team. You can always get a lot more done, and there's a lot more uh, creative minds coming together to solve a common problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being able to like get down, part of my favorite thing about game development is the beginning when you get to sit down with everybody and kind of like come up with the ideas for the game that you're about to make. It's just a very fun collaborative process that like, I don't know, it feels very fulfilling to get and like collaborate in one space together. Definitely. Oh, design is one of my passions. Come, take a look at my costume wardrobe. So, Brian, what exactly is character design? So for character design, we're gonna work through a whole bunch of different iterations of the character in order to try and figure out exactly what design is gonna work best for our game, such as the proportions of him, his size, his arm length, and everything else about him. And you do all that with highly advanced technical computer software? Well, sometimes we do, but sometimes we like to do it the good old fashioned way with paper and pencil. Can you show me? Yeah, definitely. All right, so to start off, we're gonna try drawing a front view of Guzzi. What's a front view? Uh, so just thinking about him being drawn from straight on like this. And then after that, we'll move to a side view where we see kind of the, the profile of him. Got it. All right, so we know he's supposed to be very gooey. So I'm thinking we want a very round form for him overall. So maybe we'll give him a big belly to start out. Move our way up to the head, kind of like a big teardrop shape. And we think maybe he wants like a big eye here. And then I think Brent said he wanted one arm for him. Uh -huh. So a maybe squiggly. we'll give a big squiggly arm here. Thinking about how he would move, since he's really gooey, I think he would drag along the ground. So maybe we'll give him like this little wiggly bottom here. Make it all lumpy and same with his body. We'll kind of make him big and lumpy here. So at the side view, we're going to know that this goo is dragging behind him. So we're going to have kind of this long tail of goo that's drooping off of him, going up to his head here, and then a big gooey bottom. And after you draw these, do you use these exact copies for the for the image or do you end up redrawing them to make them look cleaner? Typically we'll end up redrawing them digitally, um, just refining the shapes a little bit and polishing them up before handing them off to be 3D modeled. Okay. So this first initial drawing, it's okay to mess up? Yeah, definitely. Mistakes are always gonna be made and with um, paper and pencil, you can always erase it, do another one and there's nothing you have to worry about. 
And then after that, we might want to continue to mess around with, with different expressions for him. So maybe we want to redraw a front view of him here. Really getting that gooeyness in there. That one looks really creepy. <laughs> and just trying to figure out the exact proportions of this character that we want. And with the front view, you would never tell that his tail is protruding so far behind him. Right, so that's why it's so important to do multiple views so that when you're passing off your designs to the 3D modeler, there's no guesswork for them in there. They know exactly what the character is supposed to look like from all different angles. Right, yeah. But we're not 100% sure that purple is the best choice. That was our first choice, but why don't we try out some other colors to figure out if something else might work a little better. So a blue goosey could look pretty cool. I'm gonna try that out. So how do y'all come to the decision of what color you like? So once I go through a whole bunch of different sketches, I will then take it to the team and we'll have a big group discussion about it. Okay. So we'll all come together, say what we like and don't like about different sketches, and maybe fi figure out a middle ground where all of us agree on the best choice. Sounds good. And now, would you like to try and add something to this? Maybe right in the mouth and the eye? Okay, let what me see. What do you think would look good there? Um, I think a mad goosey. And then we give him some Maybe some mean eyebrows here. Then we throw an eye right here. Thin pupil. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and then I think a horn. Yeah. And then a goo trail. <laughs> yeah, that looks awesome. Perfect. Really good. All right, Ty, so now that we're done the drawings, we're gonna hop into the 3D modeling process of the project. Sounds good. So we have these awesome concept art that uh, our concept artist, Genya, has made for us for the project. And generally the way that we start 3D modeling anything is all with primitive shapes. So I've got this reference image here that I'm gonna work off of, but I'm actually gonna start 3D modeling this with a cube. So I'm gonna drop just one little cube into the scene and this is gonna be the base of our character. Okay. And then I've got a bunch of tools here to begin adding more and more geometry to this cube and slowly shape and morph it into the shape of our so character. So you make a bunch of shapes to make one character? Yeah. Okay. It's all started from a cube. Okay. So it's kind of like clay making in a way, yeah, but just computers. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You're slowly taking this cube and, and molding it into it. like a, a shape, a gooey shape. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Until we round out all the edges and get the exact shape that we're looking for. All right, so now that you see we have a, a pretty good base model going here, typically we'd spend another couple hours cleaning this up, adding in all the extra detail and make sure that it's ready to go and then we'll go into the rigging phase of the project. Ooh, what's that? So that's where we actually add the skeleton or the bones of the character so that we can animate them. Animations have bones? <laughs> yeah, just like human beings or puppets, if you think about the way that you would control a puppet, you need to have an armature going through them, the skeleton of it, oh. so that you know where they move and bend. Okay. And then you can animate them. So here's our finished rig. And you can see all these extra controls that we've added. So now we can get in here, start moving the arms wow. around. Move his head around. Hey. And then here's some of our cool controls where we've got in and programmed some interesting functionality to give us some extra wiggle on these arms. Okay, he's doing the worm. <laughs> So this makes it really easy for our animators to get in, hit a couple controls, and all of a sudden the character's moving. Wow. 
So what makes you want to do this with the team rather than just do it by yourself? If, if I were to try and do this all myself, it'd take years, mm. maybe decades. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Their games are very involved. There's so many different pieces, uh, so many different aspects to it mm -hmm. that I can't do all myself. Even if you try really hard? You could. But again, it would take you very long and certain people are a lot better at certain aspects of a game than you might be. You might be really talented at the art or the animation or even the music of the game. And you want some other people who are more talented at the other aspects to round it out and bring the vision all together. Wow, okay. So now that Guzzi is all rigged up, how do we animate it? Well, that's something that I prefer to pass off to Brent because he's a lot better at doing this than I am. I wish you were here. Hey guys, how's it going? I don't know what happened, but I was checking out Hildegard's fashion design and all of a sudden I got dragged into her show. She has some really good tea though. Wow, Brent, you look great. Thank you. And you're here just in time. Do you think you could help explain animation to us? For sure, I would be happy to. Brian, you have to try some of this tea. It's artisan. You really have to. It's quite good. All right, well, I'll be back. Awesome. Cool. So now that we have the character all rigged up, it's really time to animate. So some of the things that we need to do is think about what animations we need for the game. You know, when you're running, you want to have that nice forward momentum. Mm -hmm. So you want to look like you're actually kind of mo moving through space and having a lot of wind going through your hair. Mm -hmm. Guzzi, unfortunately, doesn't have any hair. Or any arms. Or any arms, but has a giant tentacle up at the top. So a thing to do to make this look like Guzzi's moving really forward is if I rotate this back. So I can move back his tentacle and get it into a nice position here to make it look like he's moving through space. Oh, like the wind is blowing in his hair. Exactly. Or exactly. I guess slime tentacle thing. Slime tentacle thing, yeah. exactly. That's the technical term. That's the technical thing. So as we go through and grab some of these other joints, we can really kind of push Guzzi you know, forward here. And you can see that this is one of those FK joints because the rest of the bones here followed as I moved this joint forward. So now that we have this in a pretty good spot, let me load up one of the actual animations of Guzzi here running forward. So as you can see here, since we had this animation already ready to go, we can kind of show off what a final polish animation would be for Guzzi when he's running forward. Awesome. Whoa. I know, right? It doesn't really look like he's running though. It looks like he's just doing a little jig dance. And that's because a lot of the times in 3D packages, you don't want the character to actually move away from the pivot. Because since these animations are looping, you want the character to naturally look like it's traversing through an environment. So even though it looks like Guzzi is staying in place, if we were to put this inside of you know, the game engine, Guzzi would actually naturally look like he's slugging along as he's making his way through the environment. So you need the surroundings of the environment to really show that he's running. Exactly, and that way you'll actually see Guzzi passing by a bunch of you know things in the living room or the bedroom or wherever he's going to you know scare the family around the house. So do you do all this animation by yourself? Uh, no, I don't. I have a lot of help from other animators, a part of the PHL collective team. The great thing about collaboration is you can really learn from other people during the process. And in video games, like Brian mentioned earlier, you really can't do it alone. So the best part is being able to take bits of information and bits of people's ideas and be able to come together for something bigger and better. And at the end of the day, that's really what art is, is a, is a nice collaborative medium. All the rats are gone, and your studio is back up and running. You're good to come back. Well, I guess it's time for y'all to go now. <gasps> Thanks for coming. Oh, going so soon? But who's going to be the peanut butter to my jelly? I'm sorry, Hildegard. Now that our studio is open, the team needs us. Oh, well, maybe next time we can run some games PvP. But until then, keep it goozy. Sure thing, Hildegard. Ty, thank you so much for letting us use your grandma's studio. Yeah, it was so much fun. And you guys look great in your outfits. Thank you. I think they're in great taste. <laughs> 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 oh. 
Um, Freddy, uh, about earlier this morning, you're not mediocre, okay? I, I just, I was just frustrated that I couldn't get the painting to come out the way that I wanted it to, and I brought it out all on you, and I'm sorry. Look, I still want to create my own masterpiece, but I'd love to create a painting with you, if that's okay with you. We good? We're good. forgot. I got you some snacks. Awesome. Beef jerky, sunflower seeds, cheese. Oh my gosh, these are my favorites. And I got this hamburger candy for Hildegard. Where is Hildegard? Oh, she went off looking for someone to be the peanut butter to her jelly. What? It's a long story. Okay, well, what was the project you wanted to do with me? I'm thinking about making a portrait of Hildegard. Who else do you know that has that distinctive flair? Getting down her likeness is going to be super easy. Oh, I can already hear her. Oh, Ty, I would be honored to serve as your creative muse for you and Freddy's collaborative vignette. I shall fetch my best attire. Hey, that was pretty good and even better vocabulary. Thanks, let's get started. Oh, before we go, I have to finish out my closing. Oh, wait, Freddy, I think I want to do the closing today. You were barely in this episode. Right. Hey, art fans, I know you're usually expecting Freddy to be the show closer, but today I was the one that learned all the lessons. I started off unhappy, but I'm glad that Brent and Brian from the PHL Collective came to visit the studio today. First, I have to say, creating video games for a living has to be the coolest thing ever. Secondly, I've learned all about collaboration and how important of a role it plays in the art and creative processes. I've learned that in group projects, it is wise to value everyone's input because their ideas could be far better than what you could have ever thought possible. And after all, just like you, they want the project to be the best it could be. I'm glad I've learned that lesson and I'm glad I finally made up with Freddie. And now I can't wait until we make our portrait for Hildegard. Until next time, Infinite Art Hunters, this is Ty, signing off. It's the Infinite Art Hunters! Hey guys, over here! Oh yeah, yeah! We're on another adventure with Fred. Looking for art and making friends. Checking in with Grandma Tilly, the adventure never ends. We're gonna go to real places, find magic and wonder, and try new things and see what we can discover. There's art everywhere, and I really wanna explore. It's in the food that we eat, in the trees, it's in the, the forest. Infinite Art Hunters! <laughs> Support for this program has been provided by the William Penn Foundation with additional support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Sidewater Family Foundation, the Thomas Locke Charitable Fund, and viewers like you. Continue the fun at home with art projects, activities, and printables paired with the episode you just watched. Available at whyy.org slash The Infinite Art Hunt.